Hi, everybody. My name is Sam. Thank you for joining me on Sam's Healing Podcast. Today, man, you guys, whether you're listening, whether you're watching, you are in store for a treat today. One of my favorite human beings, one of my favorite professionals is with us. Her name is Sharon. Sharon, you were in a while ago and you just completely blew everybody's mind on narcissism and sex addiction and all that. Today, we're going to do it a little bit different and talk about some other stuff. But number one, thank you so much for coming in to be with us. I am so glad to be here. We had so much fun the last time. We really did. And uh, for those of you that might be new to Sharon, I'm going to have her introduce herself in a minute. But I send clients to Sharon all the time. I believe in what you do. You and your husband do a great work, man. You are literally changing the world. So for the new guests, as well as maybe a refresher for some of the people that have followed me for years, tell everybody who you are, what you do, what you love to do, all that fun stuff. Okay. So you know how awkward I am at this. So just forgive me about my awkwardness. Um, you know, I have all these titles after my name. I don't really even remember all of them or what they mean, but um, but I am a betrayal trauma therapist. I think that that really is the way I like to sum up what I do. And and betrayal trauma um, in the the cleanest sense, sort of the the women who have experienced their husband's infidelity, but also that betrayal trauma that comes from uh, the the unmet childhood needs that yeah. um, that our clients have also experienced and lived their life from. Now, we all know that stabilization and safety is so important, and we're going to talk about sort of a part of that today, but I'm going to get back to your question, and I'm going to say that I am an LCSW. I have um, been working with families for 28 years. Um, and I, um, this has been my specialty for 13 years. Um, I am in recovery from, um, betrayal trauma myself. My husband, uh, let's see, discovery was 13 years ago, uh, in August. And, um, we were separated for a while. Uh, we got back together, um, we both did really hard work to make that happen. And um, man, it's 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 a dream. Uh, the relationship that we have is based on such trust and mutual respect for each other. Um, and I just can't tell you what it's like to be loved and adored for me and all my faults. And that's what we're really looking for to help people um, in our couples programs. Well, true to form, you launch out just doing an introduction. You say something that makes me go, oh my gosh. So, so many people who might be listening heard you say the word trust. Mm. Oh, good Lord. So we'll keep bragging about how awesome you are, but you just said that your relationship now has trust. So I guess I got to ask you, this wasn't even part of what we were going to talk about, but I'm is it possible? Is it possible to get trust back? Because I can introduce you to a thousand people that would say, I'll never trust him or I'll never trust her again. I respect that. I totally get it. But man, talk about what trust can look like, should look like for those who are trying to heal from one of the most despicable things you can go through in life. Yes. So trust looks like You know, I'm not I'm not just trusting him not to act out again. I'm not just tr trusting him to uh, stay true to our marriage, but I'm trusting him to be true to himself and the growth that he created in order to sustain a healthy lifestyle. And that's really, really what I trust in him. And and sometimes now I, I can be a little bossy. Um, and I'll just say that right up front. No. Um, uh, now I don't know what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> well, but I love something that you said. You said the growth that he created. 
which is masterful because we as unfaithful cannot be mothered into growth, bossed into growth, manipulated into growth, right? It has to be growth that we willingly decide. Now, it may not be because we have this, now this might get controversial. It's not because we always have this come to Jesus moment if you come from faith or this deep awakening moment where we're like, you know, I need to be a better human. It might be, I don't want to lose my marriage. I don't want to lose my kids. I don't want to lose half my assets. I don't want to lose this wonderful house with a guest house and a beach house and all of this stuff. But I find that, you know what it does? It's not necessarily always the motivation. It's the work and whether or not that unfaithful man or woman will do the work. Do you agree? Your thoughts? Absolutely. So nine and a half out of 10 clients that we get, their wives are referring the husbands to us. And so their pants are on fire, right? They don't want to lose the life that they have. <clears throat> Somewhere in, in our work with them, um, they find this need to, to change the way they live because living in, um, in the shadow of an addiction or just outside of their own integrity. Is unbearable once mm. they have the realization that that's what they've been doing. And so, you know, when you're living in that secret life and you're, and you're going, 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 you know, it's this, it's this need to, to not experience what's happening in your life. It's this need to, to stay numb and, and stay up in your head and out of your body and out of your heart. And once we can connect someone to their heart, even in just the tiniest way, um, we see that opening for, for the men to then just um, embrace who they want to be. And that's, that's just our favorite. That's just, I can't tell you that moment when we see, we see that, that relaxation and that, that grab at their heart. Oh, right. love it. Well, and I love that because that ties into just the beautiful picture that you painted about when we can heal. And so today, now that I get back on the script and the conversation we talked about, it's incredibly heartbreaking, the shame that a betrayed spouse or partner feels. I have done so much work in my own life for shame. It has given me such a compassion for both male and female, hurt and unfaithful, with the shame that we deal with. Today, you are such an expert on the shame that a betrayed feels, but also a betrayed female and what they feel. But we can just sometimes launch out into, well, yeah, who wouldn't feel that way? But it's it's different. Like it is, I call it a diabolical shame. When I when I do my own coaching with clients and they talk about how ashamed they feel as a betrayed, it it breaks my heart because I understand that they are in such a tornado of self-hatred and I didn't do enough and it's my fault and all this stuff. So Man, walk us through the shame that the betrayed feels. Walk us through just, man, the whole DNA and the RNA of shame. So, you know, it's cultural. Mm. I think it starts there as little girls were taught that it's our jobs to take care of our families and hold them together and be the workmate of our husbands. Um. When we're living with someone that has an active addiction or whose who's sexual energy and emotional energy has just gone outside of the marriage, from that moment on, we begin to feel shame. Even when we don't know what's happening, even if we don't know about their secret life, we begin to feel shame because we feel that that pulling away, that that um, that break in the relationship. 
And so often women talk about not being able to put their finger on what it is that made them feel like something was wrong. But that that shame that we feel that we weren't enough. Um, shame is a universal feeling. Uh, what does Brene Brown say about it? I have a little thing here. So um, Brene Brown says that shame is the intensely painful feeling or experience of believing that we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging. Man, she can do a definition better than anybody I know. Amen, sister. <clears throat> So, so we get these women who come in and they feel so ashamed that, that their husbands have done, as you said, this despicable thing to them. And I remember it. I remember, I remember being in a situation one time, um, and this was early in recovery and having a realization of, of another truth that I didn't know. And, and we were in public. And we were actually with colleagues and, mm. and, and I, I could barely lift my head up. We were at a dinner and my head was practically in my plate. I, it took such effort to hold my head up because of the shame and humiliation that I felt. Nobody deserves to feel that way. Right. We know that women often put themselves aside because their husbands are the identified client. Mm. And unless they realize that they deserve help, not they have to have help, but they deserve help in such a crazy, awful, sad situation, they cannot work through that shame. And I often say, you know, shame leads to bitterness in this mm -hmm. type of situation. And, you know, bitterness does not look good on anyone, mm -hmm. nor does it feel good. So shame is a big topic with our, um, with our partners, our, our female, um, our wives. And, um, and we really go at it from all kinds of different ways. So the struggle is, I guess, one of the first parts, and this is really challenging. And I have found a way to really help betrayed partners mm -hmm. understand this in just coaching. But for those that are trying to navigate through, it's so common that a betrayed will say, you know, I could have done this better. I could have done that better. And there's an education process where you say, well, of, co of course, you weren't Jesus Christ. You weren't a perfect human being. You, you could always have done better. That doesn't justify what they have done. But then you factor in the unfortunate reality that, of course, not all, but many, not all, if you're listening, if you're watching, this isn't an allegation against you as an unfaithful, but many try to justify their affairs or their addictions by using the inadequacies or the failures of the betrays against them. So how do you help the betrays get out of that cloud and come out of that drowning ocean of, you know, suffocating on you were so bad and you were this and you were that? How do you help them realize that's just not the truth? So I remember reading a letter my sweet husband, James, wrote to um, his last affair partner about who I was. And it was heartbreaking because it was the opposite of who I really wanted to be in the world. And, and maybe there was some truth in what he was saying about um, who I was, but I had become um, such a shadow of who I was meant to be in the world in order to live with this man who had these huge secrets. And so, so I remember reading that and, and just being devastated. And of course, the, the lines of that letter just kept rolling through my mind and, and am I this and oh my gosh, you know, am I a terrible mother too? Am I a terrible uh, friend? Am I a terrible daughter, sister? 
um, person? Am I a terrible person? And um, and the way the way to step out of of that is really to share um, how you how you feel. Um, if we walk around and hold on to all of that nastiness that was just dumped on us, that doesn't have anything really to do with us, um, we we can't get out. Uh, we can't get out from under it. And so, the first thing is, hey, you know, if your husband is in treatment, please get some treatment for yourself because. Yeah. Let, let someone companion with you with compassion um, about how you're feeling. One of my favorite things to say, Sam, is who do you want to be in this? Hmm. I, I love, you know, I'm taking notes while we talk because I, I just, I learned so much from you just because, you know, you are brilliant but you don't put on this persona like you're trying to be brilliant. You're just a survivor. You've been through it. You just said something. So you said all of that stuff in referencing your husband's letter to the affair partner doesn't have anything to do with us. Now, that's a nuclear bomb. So let's walk through what that means because I just, I know that the average betrayed would go what not because they're in a position of i'm such a terrible person i can see why he cheated no 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 but how in the world do you expect a betrayer to go that doesn't have anything to do with me okay walk us through that sharon help us <laughs> so yeah that that distinction between i have been affected by someone's behavior and I am the cause of someone's behavior. That's mm. the difference. We can't do anything about someone else's behavior except to respond in a way that nurtures ourselves, that cultivates health, that represents the person that we have um, that we perhaps have set aside. And so that's that big B word, right? Boundaries. Um, we find our way out of that shame by creating boundaries as well. But yeah, I mean, we definitely are affected by what, what these lost men do. And um, there is anger, there is sadness, there's there's a lot to unpack with that. We could talk for the next three years right. about all of it. So there's this, okay, so we help them with boundaries. So the, the betrayed is listening, going, okay, I don't even know where to start. Like I just had a session 30 minutes ago with the client, sweet woman. And she was so, it was like she was coming out of the matrix. It was like the lights were coming on. It was like the smoke was clearing when I said to her, no one's going to prioritize your own healing, but you. You have been focused on your kids, focused on your husband. And in this scenario, it was the classic moment where he feels ashamed. He projects it on her. So instead of her getting to be the victim and having him be compassionate, she has to console him and take care of him because he's falling apart. So when you have, in this case, let's say a woman who is just like, what does that even mean? Like, how do I, I've been a giver and that's just who I am. Excuse me. I've wanted to just serve and protect. I wanted to be a good wife. I wanted to be a good, you know, mother. And I don't know why, how do I do that? What do you walk them through? What's kind of one of the first stages that if a betrayed is listening right now, that they could go, okay, I can do that. I can start that today. I want to empower myself. I don't know what that means. And I sure don't even know what it looks like, but I want to do it. What's something that they can start with practically? Mm. So I love a list about who you are. Hmm. Like, I want you to tell me 
what your best friend would say about you right now. Who are you? What would your children, unless they're teenagers, what would your children say about you? Um, what about your mother? What about your father, your sisters, your brothers? Um, how does the world see you? Uh, because that will give us a clue about how we live because we live from our values, right? And, and our values sculpt who we are in the world. The devastation of betrayal trauma keeps us apart from who we really are. Mm. The trauma slams us against the wall. The anger spins us like a top. The, the shock holds us frozen. We don't need the shame on top of that, but it's not enough for a therapist just to say, hey, right. you didn't do anything wrong. Right. right? It's just, it's not that. So the active, the active work is sort of climbing out of this, this, um, this hole that has been created by the shame. Um, really prioritizing who you are and how you want to be. Um, I know that I told about the, the, my, my night, my, uh, what is that called? The, um, the darkness of the soul night. Dark night of the soul. Yes. That's it. That's it. So I remember that night and I remember sort of reflecting on how much I had given up, how much shame I'd taken on. Oh, that's exact. I love Keep going. I feel like we're in church and I'm going, go girl. Exactly. Sister, how much shame. <laughs> I think that's masterful. How much shame you had taken on. Carry on. Let me get out of the way. In order to live with a man who was so sick. I could not stand the idea that I had not protected myself enough to not take on that shame that humiliation, that, that, gosh, it was just like this dark fog that surrounded everything. Yeah. My whole view of the world was laced with that shame that I took on. Um, we have a, a therapist that works with us and her name is Ivana and boy, is she just great. And she talks about generational trauma and generational shame. And she says it lives really deep in your belly. And if we can connect our minds and our bellies, we can, we can coax it out so that we can really have a look at what are the facts, what is true here and what is not. We cannot do that without compassion. And so self-compassion is something that we, we preach from oh, the mountaintops with everyone, not just the women that we see, but the men too, the self-compassion. You are doing the best that you can with what you have and, and let us companion you to something better. That we're kind of winding down, but in your masterful genius of dropping nuclear bombs. So this is a part that I think so many unfaithful, we didn't talk about this, but we're going to talk about it. Okay. So many unfaithful. When I say the journey to healing for you is self-compassion. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm a piece of, I'm awful. And I'm like, yeah. So, you know, shameful people, do shameful things and they just stay in a cycle of shame. But sometimes the betrayeds can be like, he doesn't or she doesn't deserve compassion. That's son of a, you know, that's another time. But 
when you help the unfaithful realize you were doing the best that you could with what you knew so it can bring self-compassion it doesn't justify or excuse so but if you're listening before you start writing that email in your mind before you start wanting to write a comment that says sam said that it's justifiable because they were doing their best and no i'm not saying that but if you want your unfaithful to act out again or relapse or make this a cycle, just let them keep hating themselves and let them keep despising themselves and shaming the hell out of themselves because they're going to relapse. They're going to keep acting out because it's a cycle, right? But how do you walk clients through that? You were doing the best that you could with what you knew then i mean how do you help the unfaithful male or female wrap their mind around that because they're so enveloped in self-shame and self-hatred i know i hated myself i thought i was the wickedest person and until i realized as long as i thought that way i was never going to heal or change it was it was an eye-opening experience so tell me your thoughts tell the listener your thoughts on that i think one of the opening lines on one of our web pages um, and our website is hopeforus.com, just you know, to throw that in there. Um, <clears throat> it says, you are not just your behaviors. With the guys, we immediately go to that behavioral piece about let's not relapse, right? But we also go to the unmet childhood needs and the yeah. shame that is created by not getting your needs met, even if you didn't realize that was happening. And that shame comes from, from, from such a deep, dark place in our souls and and we have to be brave enough to to sort of sidle up next to ourselves and say hey you know you did do the best that you could you didn't wake up this morning saying hey i really want to blow my life up i really want to to stick it to my wife today that yep. is not the thought that ever goes through a betrayers or an actor as we call them it's mind and i think it's so freeing to hear somebody who's an expert who's been through it share sentiment that is not bitterness and resentment and is not you know rage filled you know uh attacks on the unfaithful but i've i've not heard one ounce today of you calling the unfaithful, wicked human beings who are broken beyond repair. But I also haven't heard you lay out, oh, these poor people, they just, you know, you betray, just need to realize it and get over it. I mean, the destruction, the therapist induced trauma that so many betrays deal with of just get over it. Just move on. Mm -hmm. Stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is setting yourself back. I mean, why can't they stop talking about it? Because I think you would be the perfect person to explain both to the unfaithful and the betrayed why they can't stop talking about it and just box it up and put it in the garage. Right. So a partner doesn't have any part of that acting out. Like, when we are when we marry or are in relationship with someone, there's a there's a joined a shared narrative that happens in that relationship. And when one of the people has another relationship that has nothing to do with the partner that they're supposed to be sharing this narrative with, the partner that was left behind is searching for meaning and searching for a place to belong in that story. Yep. I don't I think it, in that story. How do you help the betrayed build a new story for mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. 
I remember working with a woman who was, I don't know, in her mid forties. She had these three gorgeous boys. Oh, yum. I loved them. And, um, and she was just precious. And, and um, her husband chose not to get help for his um, addiction. And so as we were working on who are you, she said to me, I want to feel brave again. I want to feel sexy again. And so we took some time to think about what that might look like. Now, I have a secret weapon. I have a room in our office that is full of miniature things. And so Ooh. you go in and you can find something that will suit your needs for whatever thought you are having. So we went in with the idea of what are the components to feeling sexy, to feeling whole again. Right. I remember this picture that I took of, of the creation that she made in the sand. So that sand tray or sand play. And, um, and it had this, this Wonder Woman and a, and a ladder climbing up over a, um, shoot, what is that called? Totem pole. Mm. And it was such a sort of bizarre, like, what does that have to do with her finding herself? Right. But the totem pole was, I think represented for her the idea of who she was supposed to be in this. You know, her friends expected her to be broken. Her 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 community wanted to surround her as the victim. And yeah, she was absolutely victimized, but she was in this place of, of post-traumatic growth where she wanted to, to reclaim who she was. So she was climbing over all of those expectations that she perhaps had for herself um, and certainly over the shame uh, that, that she had created. Um, and I remember she said to me, you know, sexy is fun and wise. And I'll mm. never forget her looking at me after she did that. And I was like, right, right on with you, sister. Um, <laughs> I love it. It's stories like that, that man, the unfortunate reality is you just don't hear them all. You just, I say this, I've said it for almost two decades because I realized it early on. The loudest voices are not always the most healed voices. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you've come in today with such grace and beauty to just offer hope and practical insight. So for those that are listening and watching, if they want to know more about your intensives, if they want to know more about how to get help from you, how do they find you? How do they reach out to you? So you can learn more about us um, at hopeforus.com and way in the back or the bottom, or, you know, I don't really know how websites work, but there's this media page. And so um, our old interview is on there. Um, but also some presentations that James and I have done, some um, some other interviews that we've done, and um, that really gives you a great picture of who you are. But I'd just love to talk to you. Um, so so Gail is um, is my right hand woman, and her email is Gail at hopeforus.com. I'm Sharon at hopeforus.com. James is James at hopeforus.com. I could go on and on and on with awesome. all the fabulous people that work with us. Um, but um, reaching out to Gail and saying, hey, I'd like to have a consultation with Sharon. Um, we'll get it on the books and we'll just talk. Um, I don't, it's fine if we're not the right fit because I love nothing more than to give referrals to people um, to who I think might be the right fit, but I'm really hoping that we are the right fit. Um, we're, we're pretty good at what we do. Yes, you are. And 
I didn't tell you about this at the end of every show that I do. I offer this little keep going segment. And I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what you're doing, what you've been through. I know what Sharon's been through. I know what I've been through. And if you're watching, if you're listening, listen, your health mentally, emotionally is your own responsibility. It sucks. That's not a shaming kind of get over it statement. That's a look, nobody's going to do this for you. Nobody can do this, but you, and you are worth the effort. I hope that if you, as you've listened to Sharon today, that you would see the beauty, the bravery, the courage that it takes to heal from this. And wherever you're at today, no matter what your story is, you may have a story that's so awful and you think, you know, that was good for you, Sharon, but what about me? What about the tragedies of all that I've been through? Listen, we get it. This isn't who's worse. This is, here's a healed soul that's continuing to heal, that is offering hope to you, and you are worth hope. So many times I remember feeling like I was the worst. Nobody was as bad as me. Now, truth be told, if you heard every ounce of my story, you might even say, Sam, that's pretty bad. That might be one of the worst I've ever heard. I, I had a couple of professionals early on say, that's the worst I've ever heard. <laughs> and, oh, I'm so sorry, Sam. Oh, it's true. And wherever you're at today, whatever you're dealing with, listen, I promise you, you're not the worst. And I promise you, you're worth the effort. You're worth healing. You can email me at samshealingpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we want a ragtag show here. I answer my own email. It might take me a day or two, but I'm going to answer it. Uh, if you're looking for coaching from myself, you can reach out to that same email address. What Sharon and I both want to tell you today is you are absolutely worth the effort and it is not the end of the road for you. We don't know about your marriage, but we know that it's not the end of the road for you. And if you're even thinking about harming yourself. If you're even thinking that you're not worth the effort, man, reach out to one of us today. Reach out to somebody because you're worth it. So Sharon, I can't thank you enough. We're going to keep you. having you come in. Thank you for joining me and, and thank you for being on the podcast today. I, I appreciate it. And and can I just say, choose you? Right? Choose yeah, absolutely. you. I don't think you could say it enough, but thank you for saying that. Yeah. Take care. Take care. Bye, Sam. Okay.